In this video, we'll take a quick look at the matte signature series Photoshop actions from Photography Planet. These are some of our more flexible and versatile actions. They work um, by combining stackable effects that allow you to customize the look that you get based on the particular photo that you're working with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate here with a sample photo. The, um, the actions are broken down into a few different categories. There's the base actions, the adjustment actions, tones, grains, vignettes, and finishes. And I'll go through all of these here. Uh, I'm going to start by clicking on the run all action for the bases. There's 10 different base effects that serve as foundations for the effect that you'll create. They can be used as standalone effects, um, just like a regular one click Photoshop action, or you can use them as a foundation, as a starting point and then uh, further customize it with the adjustments in the tones. So now that it's run, you'll see 10 different folders over here in the layers palette, one for each of the different effects. And I'll go through them here quickly. There's three different basic mats uh, with different levels of strength. So here's uh, mild, moderate, and max. And then there's two different fades. There's fade one, which is a lighter fade, and fade two, which is a darker fade. Then there's vintage matte, retro matte, and then there are three black and whites. There's mild, moderate, and max. So when you do the run all, you can uh, quickly see how each one impacts the photo and choose which one you want to use. So in this case with this photo, I think I'm going to use the uh, faded matte 2 as a starting point. And then we'll move on to the adjustments. And uh, there's 10 different adjustments here. You can run them individually if you know what you want, or there is also a run all action, which I'm going to use here to um, show each one. If you don't know exactly what you want to do and you're just experimenting, it helps to do the run all action. And so this is just a reminder to open up the adjustments folder in the layers palette. So when you open that folder, you'll see the 10 different options that are available. And um, I'll go through each one and then show how they can be customized. First one is a shadow recovery. And there's highlight recovery. There's add haze. Washed out. Faded. Lighten. Darken. Brighten. Contrast boost contrast reduction and uh, each one of these can be customized by using the opacity so for example if you want to add haze you would um, select the haze layer and then adjust the opacity so by default it's set at 60 percent if you increase that opacity it will give you a, a stronger effect and if you decrease it, it will give you a, a softer effect so each one of these can easily be customized which makes it um, really nice to get the effect that looks best with your particular photo. Um, in this case I'm going to use the uh, highlight recovery and then I'll also use a contrast boost and um, I think I'll reduce the effect here. So by default it's at 30 percent I'm going to reduce it down to 15 percent to make it a little bit softer. And then when you're done you can close that folder and we'll move on to the tones. Tones work the same way. You can run them individually or you can use the run all action. I'll run them all and then um, go through them and, and show you what's available here. And you get a reminder just to open the tones folder in the layers palette. When you open the folder you can see the different options here. And again each one of these is customizable. There's vibrant which will add some vibrance and saturation to the colors. So if you um, select that and then increase the opacity it will give you a stronger effect and of course if you decrease the opacity it will give you a softer effect. And there's warming, cooling, desaturate which if you um, increase the opacity all the way up to 100 percent will completely desaturate and convert it to black and white and then of course you can reduce the opacity if you'd like. And then there's several different um, color tones here and again, all of these can be customized to suit your needs just by um, adjusting the opacity to make it stronger or softer. Uh, for example, here, the violet, if 
you want to make it stronger, it's by default at 40%. If you want to make it a stronger effect, just increase the opacity. Um, I'm going to work with the blue, blue tone, and um, I want to make it a little bit stronger, so I'm going to increase it from 40% to 60%. And then I'll close that folder when I'm done. Now there's actions here for adding grain. There's a light and a heavy. So you can use whichever one you want, and each one can actually be customized to get the exact amount that you need. Um, you can customize it then by clicking here where it says Add Noise, and it'll open up the Smart Filter. So the light version by default adds 5%, the heavy version adds 20%. Um, so if you want to go somewhere in the middle, you could add, change it to 12%. Uh, and the amount of grain that shows up is going to vary depending on your photo, how much um, noise and grain is in the photo to start with, and also the resolution of the photo. Uh, I don't really want to use any grain, so I'm going to deactivate that. Then you have three options for vignettes. There is soft, medium, and heavy. And then there are a few actions down here under finishes. Um, the make snapshot is really helpful for um, making sure that you can go back if you uh, forget to make a change or something. I'm going to run that and then I'll demonstrate exactly how it works. So it just tells you that your snapshot has been recorded and to access it you need to go to the history panel. And I'll show that in just a, just a minute here. Um, then I'm going to move on to flatten. I have the, the photo the way I want to use it and the way I want to save it. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. And this is a warning just to remind you to uh, make a snapshot before you flatten it. Okay, so now flattened it, and you can see that it's just down to the single layer over in the layers palette. And if you realize at this point that you made a mistake or you want to go back, you can go to um, history, go up to your snapshot that you just made, as long as you made one. And now you can see all the layers are restored. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the flattened version because I didn't really need to go back. I just wanted to demonstrate that. So once I'm back at the flattened version, I'm going to apply some sharpening. There are two actions here for sharpening. There's a light and a strong. And this just um, reminds you to flatten it before you run the sharpening action, which I already have done. So there's the light. And then there's a stronger one. And you can reduce the um, impact of this by reducing the opacity if you want to. Okay, so that demonstrates how to um, use them in Photoshop by using the run all actions. As I mentioned, um, you don't have to use the run all actions. If you know specifically what you want, you can click on one of the bases and then move on and uh, click on some of the individual actions um, in the adjustments and tones and do it that way. These actions also work with Photoshop Elements, so I'm going to quickly move over there and demonstrate. This is Elements 13 that I'm using. These actions work with Elements 11 and newer, so currently that's 11, 12, and 13. And uh, they work pretty much the same way. I'm going to click on the Run All for the base. Um, it works a little bit differently behind the scenes, but from a user's perspective, everything is pretty much the same. It will just add your 10 folders. And then uh, when it's done, you can see how each one impacts the photo and choose the one that you want to use. Um, now, one of the differences in Elements is that Elements handles folders differently. Um, so if you want to open a particular folder in Elements, you will need to select the folder in, in the Layers palette that you want to open. And then go down to the Finishes, and you'll see an, an action here for opening the folder. You click on that, it will give you a reminder to select the folder that you want, which I already did. And then um, when you run that, it opens the folder and you can now access the individual layers. So for example, on this one, um, the hue and saturation layer, if I wanted to increase any of these things, you can do that. If you wanted to adjust the opacity of any of the layers, you can do that as well. Um, okay, and moving on to 
the tones and adjustments. Um, the adjustments and tones in the Elements version do not have the run all actions because um, with Elements handling folders differently than Photoshop, it uh, it's a little more clunky to open and close the folders. It's just easier to run them individually. So you'll just click on whichever whichever adjustments you want to run, whichever tones you want to run. Um, the grain actions are slightly different as well. So for example, if uh, you add the grain, the difference is Photoshop Elements does not support smart filters. So you can't adjust the, um, the strength of the grain like you can in Photoshop. What you can do is use the opacity to decrease the strength. So if you want something between the light and the heavy, you could uh, run the heavy grain and then decrease the opacity down to what you want. Um, the heavy grain action is applies a pretty heavy effect, so you probably won't want anything heavier, but if you did, you could um, combine the light and the heavy or you know, just multiple layers to get the strength of effect that you want. And that pretty much covers everything with um, these actions and thank you for watching.